As always, we're going to be using the CLI container to, to perform the actions here. Uh, I'm going to be running it locally on my system. Uh, you may notice the extra parameter here, uh, minus E, IBM entitlement key. That's just going to expose an environment variable from my local system into the container so that I don't have to enter the IBM entitlement key when prompted. So we're into um, the container now. And before we run the command, I need to configure the environment a little bit. So we're going to So this is just going to set up some environment variables and log me into the OpenShift cluster where we're going to be running the install. So now that's done, we're ready to run the configure rag app uh, command using the mass CLI. And we're passing in the host, port, username and password for the registry <coughs> and the, the CA file for, for the registry itself so that trust can be configured. So here we get uh, a prompt that just shows us everything that's going on. Um, we're going to hit yes. And that's done, nice and fast. To perform the actual install, I've started a, a new a new container. I could have done that in the same, continuing from the same one. I chose to start a new one just to clean things up. So I'm going to need to do the same setup and connect to my cluster. <coughs> And now we're going to run MAS install. So the first thing the install will do is prompt you to confirm whether the cluster that it's connected to is the one that you actually want to install on. And if you're not connected to the cluster, it will prompt you to enter the host and the token to authenticate with the cluster. Uh, OpenShift pipelines. Um, which is basically Tekton, um, that will be installed by the by MAS install um, if it's not already on the cluster, obviously. Uh, once that's installed, uh, we'll be prompted, as we are here, um, to choose the version of MAS that we want to install. So the selection here is broken down by the catalogue. So we release a, a cat an update every month that's in the catalog choice and within that catalog there's multiple release streams so we can see the, mo the four most recent catalogs are available here as options and in each catalog there's two release streams at the moment 811 and 810 and we can see from the table the exact version of each component of the suite that will be installed based on your choice so we're going to choose option one the december 28th catalog on the 8.11 stream we will accept the license terms. <clears throat> and one thing to note here, all these yes, no prompts, uh, the choice that is in capitals is the default if you just hit enter without entering a character. So whereas this is uh, a capital Y, I can just hit enter and that's yes. My MAS instance ID will be MAS1, workspace1. Uh, for operational mode, in most cases, production mode is what you're going to want to choose, and that's the default. We do not want the custom domain. We don't want IOP. We are going to install manage. We're not going to install quick assist, optimizer, or MBI. We don't want to customize the components or database settings. We're not doing customizations. Cognos or general editor. But we do want to install the database in the cluster. 
Um, so at this point, you would have the option if you select no to um, configure a connection to an external database that you already have. Um, but here we're going to ask it to set up a brand new database inside the cluster using IBM's DB2 operator. So yes. We're not going to set up node affinity or tolerations. That's an advanced topic beyond the scope of this video. And we're happy with the default CPU and memory limits. We're not going to go into Tegmanomic and we're not going to do any advanced edition configs. With storage classes, the installer is able to, to detect um, certain storage providers such as OCS um, and um, the IBM Cloud storage classes, for example. When it does this, it will automatically select the most appropriate storage class, um, but you still have the option if you wish to, to override those, but I am not going to do that. And we're not interested in setting any advanced settings. I do want to reuse my saved IBM entitlement key uh, from the environment variable I shared into this container at the start. And the license file is in the mounted home directory. So because this is a disconnected install, uh, the CLI is smart enough to realize that it can't use the, the image tag when, when addressing the CLI image. So it's going to be prompting, do you want to um, override the tag with the digest, which obviously we did. If you're running this on a system that's connected to the internet, it will be able to automatically look up what the digest should be and substitute that in. Uh, if you're running in inside your disconnected network, you'll be prompted to manually enter the digest, which you can look up um, online easily enough. So we're getting some confirmation of the available tasks and pipelines that are installed and we're validating that the uh, image is available in the cluster, which we can see has passed pretty quickly. The final step here is the review stage where we provide all this a summary of everything you've chosen to do. This is your last, at this point, nothing has happened on your cluster other than the installation of OpenShift pipelines. So review the choices here, make sure you're happy with what's, what's been selected. Um, and uh, a reasonably new addition to this is we're, we're providing the command that you would run to perform the same install in a non-interactive non mode. So if I wanted to run this exact same install on another cluster, I don't need to remember all the choices that I entered in. I can just copy this command and run this. And I am happy with these settings. Proceed to launch the install. So at this point, the job is done on, on, on your system. We've launched the pipeline. The pipeline is now going to drive the install. And we're going to switch to the OpenShift cluster to monitor the progress of the installation. So from the OpenShift dashboard, we're going to navigate to pipelines. And we can see our pipeline here that's just been created when we run the MAS install command. And this is, this is what's doing all the work. So everything we did in the CLI was to build the input parameters for this pipeline. And this is going to run through. It's going to install all of the dependencies, MAS core, and all selected MAS applications. So you can view it in this graphical view where you can navigate and see all the different forks in the pipeline, depending on what you've selected. In most cases, you're gonna see a lot of these are disabled and, and won't actually be executed because they're only enabled um, based on the applications you chose. So obviously this fork here 
is only going to be activated if you chose to install visual inspection. This one here is only going to be activated if you selected to enable the term turbonomic integration and, and so on. Uh, so you can watch the install run this way. Um, the way I usually like to keep a track on it is go to the task runs view, sort by um, most recently started, and then you get a nice feed of new tasks starting up and stopping. At this point, there's not really a lot to do. Uh, just go and go and take a lunch break, get a coffee, whatever you want to do. Um, depending on the number of applications you've chosen to install, the install time can vary from you know an hour to to up to ten hours, maybe even more if you're installing every single application, every single dependency, and you've configured manage with every single possible component. Um, what we're installing here uh, is a base manage install only and that should take a couple of hours to build to to get to the end so we'll probably use some editing to cut down some of the wait times and we'll check on on, on this uh, periodically So at this point, we can see that the install has progressed far enough that the core platform uh, is actually installed. So if we go back to the pipeline overview, this is the core path here. We've installed all the key dependencies for the, for the platform. We've performed the install, we've configured, and we've verified that everything is ready. So at this point, Mass Core is, is up and running in this cluster. And we're just working through the manage path of the pipeline now to get the manage um, DB2 preparation completed, the installation of the manage operator, and then the configuration of, of our manage workspace. So if we take a break from this view for a second and we go to look at operators installed, We'll now see the, the core namespace is there and ready. We have Maximum Application Suite 875 installed. And if we look at Maximum Application Suite core, we can see we've got our MAS1 instance. And if we look in the YAML, we can see the status is all pretty good. Everything's reporting healthy. And we're good to go. So this is the Mars website. Because we're using self-signed certificates, we're going to have to accept some warnings. That's fine. So we've accepted some warnings. So now we should be able to go to admin. So you won't get these warnings if you're running with uh, real certificates rather than self-signed ones. And we're ready to log in. Uh, so to get the super user credentials for your MAS instance, uh, you'll go to workloads, secrets. We're still in MAS1 pipelines. So we need to switch that to MAS1 core. here. 
has one credentials super user. And I can move all these because this instance is behind a VPN. Then I log in with this username. This password. So we get the standard warning that we're logged in with the super user account, which you need to treat the same way you would treat a root account on a on, on any kind of Linux system. It's there for emergencies only. You should really, the first thing you do, go and create your personal account, set up as set it up as an administrator, and then use that going forward and keep the super user account in your back pocket for emergencies. Um, so at this point, nothing much is going to be uh, installed because we haven't got, um, if we go back to the pipeline, switch to MAS1 pipelines. We can see now we're past the step where we prepare the DB2 instance and we've just started to install manage 50 seconds ago. So at some point in the next minute or two, um, the manage application will actually show in here as, as, as um, being in progress for install. Uh, but we will just keep an eye on it in this view for now. So these are the last two steps that remain. This one should complete pretty quickly, 15 minutes or so maximum. And this is the this is the big one that will vary depending on the configuration of manage that you're installing, what customizations you've set up, everything like that. Because I selected not to apply any configs, not to apply any customizations, not to customize the components and add various industry solutions. Um, we're running a pretty minimal configuration by default that is just base and health. Uh, so that should take two hours tops. So we can see now that the configuration is completed. It took two hours, 17 seconds. And we can browse through the logs of it see what's happened if we like. Here we can see the final state that triggered the um, triggered the pipeline to notice that it was now ready. And if we go back into the admin dashboard, applications we can see that managed now reporting that it's active everything is finished and we can see everything is looking healthy so all good